hey, it's it's the opening of this new week's uh, reading vlogs, and I am reading Batman The Adventure Continues Season 2, which uh, is what it sounds like. The cartoon from way back in the 90s, uh, it ended. Paul Dini was a head writer on it. Bruce Tim, Paul Dini were the guys behind that, and they decided to continue the series with comic books and I read the first one it was great and then this one I have just started this one obviously you can tell by the the talent on the front it's about the Court of Owls mostly I think the other one had a lot of Red Hood in it which I absolutely loved but the art style is exactly like the cartoon and the writing is just as fun and they're using characters that they didn't really use in the show like Red Hood uh Zantana is that how you say it the magician girls in it uh you know other characters in the Joker, basically, and it's it's a good time. So if you like the Batman the Man series, this is it feels the same. It's pretty great. And I have a couple other things I intend to read this week. I, I want to I have the Umbrella Academy books, but I only have the first two. So I want to read those to see if I want the third one and the short story collection. I'm not sure about the short stories because I don't like short stories really in any form, and that <laughs> includes comic books. So we'll see. And then um, I want to read the Disney Twisted Tales Go the Distance, which is the Meg story. The author's name escapes me. I think it's, is it Liz Cadwell? I don't know. I'll have to look, but I want to read that. And then the rest of my week will be picking random things to read. I'm going to try and whittle down my cursed TBR. I wrote down every single book on my shelves that I haven't read. And my goal for the rest of this year and to the end of next year is to make sure I read every single unread book on my shelves because, you know, well, I don't think I probably have to explain that. So I'm going to be, for my comics, just randomly plucking comics to read this week. And I'll be cutting that with audiobooks. So I'll keep you posted. But for now, it's, it's a Batman night. I'm also watching videos about the Gotham Knights game coming out in October. I'm cautiously excited but I've been burned before Arkham Arkham Knight so uh, we'll see how that goes I have finished Batman season two and it was just as delightful as the first one only the first couple stories are about the Court of Owls and then there was a Mr. Freeze one and then one with a couple other villains it's basically it, it's described in the title of the season so it's like it's episode it's like six episodes of the show in comic book form and I do highly recommend it. Also, oh, also, I have managed to read volume one and two of Umbrella Academy and I, I liked it more than I thought I would. I was a little worried I would be bored or just spend the entire time comparing it to the show. It's definitely very different than the show but not in a bad way. I I kind of like when things are way different from the adaptation because it's like, oh, I get two versions of the thing I like. So I'll be on the lookout for the third one uh, when I go to the used bookstore. But I probably will get the short story collection because I just don't really like short stories. But I'm curious to see how the overall story ends. I don't think there's going to be any more because it's been years and years. So we'll see. But then again, the short stories just came out. So, I don't know. The show's about to end. There's going to be one more season, I think, and then the show's over. So, who knows what'll happen, but overall, I did enjoy Umbrella Academy. If you don't know what that's about, it's it's seven super-powered people who got raised by someone who tried to make them into superheroes and the emotional damage that it caused. Uh, I like the show better, but I didn't I didn't dislike the comics, so... You know, there's that. Next, I want to <clears throat> I want to pick another comic book to read because I'm trying to get through my my TBR of of unread comics. So these are my full collection, and from these, I want to pick something that I have never read before. I did just get this Scarlet Witch out in the corner. Part of me is curious about these Simpsons ones because I haven't read them in a while. And then my other option is I've only read 
most of these new 52 ones up to graveyard chipped. So I could just like pound the rest of those all in one go. Do I hate myself enough to do it? Maybe. For now, hmm. Give me something quick to get through. What do we have? I have heard most of these. Hmm. Superman Red Sun. Possibly. Also considering this Dr. Horrible, but I think Joss Whedon actually wrote that, and I, I hate him. I, my mom bought me that comic maybe a decade ago, because I used to love Dr. Horrible. But, you know, time happened and all that. Am I being boring? Maybe. <sighs> hmm... Gotham by Gaslight, that's a classic. Ooh, Arkham City. You know what? Okay. I don't know if Arkham City is based off the video game specifically, but I bet it is. It was actually written by Paul Dini. The game, he did all the game stuff. Okay. Lead into the best-selling video game. You know what? Screw it. I will read Batman Arkham City and hope that it goes okay. And if it doesn't go okay, then that sucks because I don't like getting rid of comic books. Oh, but the art in here. Who does the art? Carlos DeAnda? I don't know him, but I do know that this art specifically is, uh, it looks identical to the art in the, the games. Because if you've ever played Arkham Asylum... They have like tapes you can find that has uh, patient interviews with the villains and the art looks absolutely identical to the style of them because each tape, each character has a profile picture basically. So if that's what that is, that's pretty neat. Perhaps I'll do further research and then forget to update you on what I found because that's, that's how I work. Anyway. I'm going to read this and I'll, I'll tell you what I think of it and then I'll try and find the words to describe the go the distance Disney twisted tales because I read that too and I just don't got anything to say about it um excuse me can we take a moment to witness these perfect little rat feet on my comforter look at the little trail of Wookiee feet and Wookiee is on my shoulder what's up what's up Wookiee Queen! Oh. Couldn't come up with anything to say for Go the Distance. It, it was boring. That's all I... Uh, I mean, I love Hercules, and Meg is, like, my favorite non-Disney princess, Disney princess. But uh, the concept is Meg has to become a god to be with Hercules, because it, it picks up right at the end of the movie, and... Can I angle this right? No, I can't. It takes place right at the end of the movie, where they're, like, at Mount Olympus... And they kiss and stuff, and then Zeus is like, well, Hercules isn't allowed to go be down on Earth, so the only choice is for Meg to become a goddess. And of course, all these Disney stories for Twisted Tales are young adult, so it reads really young, which obviously, you should know that going in. I just, I have my thing with young adult. I was hoping, because Meg is older, that it would read a little older, because I, I love the Beauty and the Beast Twisted Tales, the A Tale as Old as Time, because that one reads like young adult, but upper young adult, like they really get into it in that one, I feel like. And I'm not holding up the book. I should be. See all this empty space? That's where, that's where the book could be because it's got a cute cover. But uh, I don't know. It just, it's, it's just like a what if story, but it still made me mad that <laughs> they, they undid the part where Meg's ex-boyfriend had cheated on her and like left her for someone else. And it's not even, it doesn't even necessarily feel like the story's about bitterness or, or like forgiveness or anything. And it's, they just did it for like a twist and that was annoying. And I didn't like the book very much on top of that. So it was a quick read. I don't have more to say about that. What I am reading now is The Bear and the Nightingale. Uh, I have history with this book. I, I read half of it and then I put it down because it was uh, the most boring thing I've ever read in my entire life. And then I started to want to read it again because I heard it's like great you just got to get through the first book because it's really slow so I'm working on that I am more than halfway through I've just got that little bit left 
Uh, it's still horribly boring. I'm still waiting for the frost demon to come in and be interesting, and that's not going to happen until like the last page of the book. So I'm going to finish this entire book and then read the next one to get any payoff. Supposedly this whole book is like set up, but it's like set up for what? What kind of setup is it? I don't care. I don't care about any of these people. All I care about is the demon and he's not really in it. And like, it's very fairy tale like but so boring. And also my book is crooked. Like all the pages, like everything's printed crooked. Like it's on the page crooked. The whole thing is like that. Every page, even the, even the text is put on crooked, which isn't a big deal. I'm probably gonna end up unhauling this if I get like a few hours in the second one and it sucks. I'm just going to unhaul it and then call it quits. I was keeping it for a long time because it fit perfectly on my shelf to where like the whole thing was filled and I didn't have any extra space on it, but whatever. I'm going to throw caution to the wind. It doesn't matter anymore. It's three o'clock in the morning and I'm, I'm tired and I want this book to be over. And, um, so yeah, uh, I want to die or read something good. One of the two, whichever comes faster. I just want to say I'm reading this. I'm reading Graveyard Shift, which is, I think, issue six or seven in the new 52 Batman. And I just wanted to point out this absolutely amazing panel. This is uh, current times, but not because it was 2011. So... Lucius had thrown away this costume. If you recognize it, it is the Batman Beyond costume. Batman Beyond is the cartoon that took place like a few decades after the Batman animated series with Terry McGinnis's Batman. So this is Terry McGinnis's costume. And Bruce is like, why did you throw this out? And then Lucius is like, it's 20, it'll be 20 years before this thing's cost effective. And I was so delighted to see that, that I just wanted to share it because I adore Terry McGinnis and Batman Beyond, so any reference to it, which is f fewer and farther between than you'd think, just absolutely delights me, so. Gorgeous art by Greg Capullo. I, oh my god, this was, this was fun. Yeah, I'm reading Graveyard Shift, and the next is Endgame, because I'm trying to knock out my comic book TBR, which I will try to remember to show you later but anyway one last shot of this beautiful costume stunning okay I finished the entire new 52 run of Batman and I don't have them in my hands they're over on the other side of my room so I can't hold them up while I talk about them but uh I'll, I'll just review them as a whole uh the second half of new 52 Batman it's not very good I don't want to spoil it because it's massive spoilers for the entirety of it but uh I gave it like three stars, which I think is being generous. Uh, not great. It's weird because the first half I thought was so good and the second half was just like really lame in a very comic booky way. And I'll leave it at that. Uh, but I've moved on to The Simpsons. I'm trying to get through my Simpsons comics I haven't read. This one is the crustiest old comic I think I own. It's from 1994. And uh, it's cute so far. The first story is Homer becomes a giant. And that's it. And it's very short. I have a few more. Uh, I'm hoping I'll like these. I probably won't have a lot to say about them because they're the Simpsons comics. So, you know, it is what it is. But I wanted to check in because we're in the middle of the week now. So that's what I've been doing. <laughs> I am uh, reading Elantris by Brandon Sanderson, which I know is not a great place to start with Brandon Sanderson, but I wanted to give it a go again. This one was available. It's okay so far. <laughs> My issue is I the fantasies I usually like aren't like the epic fantasies because in my opinion those are all the same even with the little nuances they're all the same and it's kind of hard to get into and and boring. <laughs> I like um small scale fantasies like I I have what's it called lattes and legends legends and lattes something like that I have that on hold because I think I'm gonna like that one and I like Patricia Briggs fantasy and I've read Kim, one of Kim Harrison's like fantasies and uh, I like that one they're not they're not urban fantasies fantasy and um I like those ones I like smaller ones that are more character driven and more detail like more small scale I guess I don't really like the, the 
big bombastic fantasies, which is what Brendan Sanderson does. And I also, so far, hate every female character he's ever written. It's like, there's this, if you read a lot of books by women and then a lot of books by men, you'll notice what men think of a strong woman and what women think of a strong woman. And generally, the women who write women are be way better at it, obviously. And then men who try to write strong women, like, they're all the same and it's not great <laughs> and that's my opinion of his so far is like I know a lot of people really like his his characters and his female characters in particular because they think they're strong but it's just like no the narrative is just saying they're strong but when you look at what they're doing and how men write women they fall right into that same category and there's no nothing interesting about them no nuance they're just they're just a little bit clever which is nice better than making them stupid and emotional but it doesn't a strong woman make cloud's so affectionate look at her she's so beautiful too i love a good Siamese. i don't know if you're a good Siamese, but you are Siamese. <laughs> but anyway <sighs> Uh, I'm cutting Brandon Sanderson with a couple of other books, uh, just because the book's <laughs> a 29 hour audiobook, and I don't want to listen to that for the next week alone. So, uh, I also started The Romantic Agenda by, I just saw her name. Hi, baby. I'll put it on screen, uh, what, what the author's name is. This is a romance about... Uh, an asexual protagonist, too, I think. Uh, <laughs> and the main character, Joy. It, why do you, okay. Oh, no, she's coming. <laughs> the main character, Joy, is uh, in love with her best friend, who is in a different relationship. And, like, all of his exes blame her for their breakup because he, they feel like he's too close with her. But he doesn't view her as anything but a friend, basically. But she's in love with him. That's the premise. I was interested in this because A, a sexual representation in a romance. I'm very interested in that. And B, uh, Gabby Reads liked it and we have similar tastes in romances. So, testing it out. But, um, yeah, the, <laughs> this rat, I swear. <laughs> Cloud. But yeah, I also appreciate that they put a person of color on the cover because historically, publishers do not do that. So like, awesome. I like that. <laughs> We're about an hour into the romantic agenda. I say we as if the rats are listening. <laughs> anyway, it's Grumpy Sunshine, which I didn't know and I'm down for it. <laughs> Seems like about time to get into my cursed TBR. I've written down every book on my shelves that I haven't read, and I fully intend on reading every single one of them and, and having shelves where I have read every single page. These are all my books proper, and then I have the comics I haven't read. A lot less than the normal books, obviously. And I have gotten a good amount read in the last couple weeks. I still obviously have hundreds. There's just about a hundred left of my normal books. Maybe 35 of my comics. So about a, a year's worth of reading I have here. But I sure would like to, I sure would like to actually get it done. It's very daunting to look at like this, but I'm really low on, on shelf space as you can see, like, my rats are also fighting, which you can probably also see. It's fine. It's mostly play. But my shelves are, are absolutely jam-packed with books, which means that I can't get new books. Or if I do, I don't have anywhere to put them. This little gap right here is basically all the space I have left. This is full, too. Mind this one little slot where Bear and the Nightingale used to be. I'm not keeping that. And I'm currently... I just started reading this. Probably not keeping that. It's horribly boring. Um, and then this little gap here for Patricia Briggs. So, oh my god. Hello, I just give you treats. I'm not giving you more. But, uh, yeah. So, my goal is to read some books that I haven't read 
on all the ones I don't want to keep so that I can hopefully make a little more room. Don't mind the Five Nights at Freddy's Funkos. It's a thing. Sorry. Don't worry about it. I hate this. I have little more to say. Okay, right, so I am starting uh, twice to, if you see that, that's from my humidifier. <laughs> Uh, I'm starting Twice Tempted by Janine Frost. It's the second in the Night Prince series, which is a uh, vampire series about Dracula. I know it sounds so lame, but I love it. Don't know why, but I do. Anyway. Just let me see your face. Let me see your pretty face. No? She rejected y'all. I'm sorry. But yeah, so I'll, I don't know if I'll update you with more of this because like I feel like you guys know how I feel about this series. I've talked about it enough. Uh, and after this, I have a bunch of other books to read that I can't remember at the moment. Well, see you next clip. Alright, so I finished <clears throat> Twice Tempted. Um, Cloud. Yeah, so, like, my feelings on it haven't really changed. I enjoyed it for the most part. I don't like the, the copious amounts of rat death at the end. But I do understand most people think rats are good for horror and nothing else. Because they don't see faces. Like this. Look at her. Look at her. You couldn't hurt a fly. Not true. She could. But she chooses not to. They're benevolent. But anyway, uh, I have moved on to Magic Bites, which I've read before. I think even on the channel. So I probably won't say much about it. I'm just giving the series another chance. I don't like, I don't like the um, power dynamics in a lot of Alana Andrews' work because they tend to, it, if you don't know, it's a husband-wife team. But because I am going to blame him here because women don't normally do this, but because there is a man writing it, men don't have a good understanding of fun power dynamics. They make everything a competition where if the man loses, that's emasculating. So it's not a lot of fun to read a lot of time, but I wanted to give it a second chance anyway. That was, that was foggy. Don't mind her. So here I am. All right, so I am a little more than halfway through. Hi, Riffy. Hi, Riffy. Riffy. It's just mama. I'm a little bit more than halfway through uh, Magic Bites, and my every time I read this, my biggest problem with it is that everything's Kate's fault. It's like she goes to uh, the pack headquarters. Uh, if you if you don't know, Kate Daniels is a uh, post-apocalyptic urban fantasy, and there's the shapeshifters. So she goes to the pack headquarters, and the pack leader, who's also her love interest, Karen. He tells everyone to basically treat her bad and intimidate her. And when she responds and takes one of his people, basically, not hostage, like she just makes him defend her with magic, basically. <clears throat> it's somehow her fault. And like he's blaming her that he has to either punish him or give him to her. She's like, you're the one who told, her, told him to do that. It's your fault, buddy. And then later, I haven't gotten to this part yet, but I remember it because it pisses me off. They, everyone's blaming her, like, date. She has a date with someone. She, everyone's blaming him for everything that wrong that's going on. And when she finally agrees to test him out and it's not him, they blame her when she didn't even suggest him. And it's so irritating. And this is, like, one of the main reasons I hate Curran because nothing's ever his fault. So I'm going to finish Magic Bites today, and I <clears throat> really cannot express how poorly edited it is honestly and I don't mean what people normally mean with that which is like there's a couple of typos or something like that you're not gonna notice that in an audiobook no what I mean is it doesn't make sense they have characters do things and then for some reason a couple of pages later they act like Kate was the one who did them so like I mentioned this earlier but like at some point they blame her like this guy she went on a couple dates with for uh murders and by they i mean current current's the one who's just like well it has to be this person so they go and investigate him and when it turns out it's not him they all blame her as if she's the one who suggested it when all she did was go on a couple of dates with him 
<clears throat> and it's so annoying. And like literally everyone's like this. They all are like mad at her for I guess just dating a guy. So yeah, it just feels like it was really poorly edited. Like they had Kate originally be the at fault for all these things that people are blaming her for. And then they went in and edited it because Kate wasn't really likable. And then they didn't change anyone's responses to it. So it's just really bad. Okay, so I still think it's poorly edited because I understand what's going on now. But also it's even dumber. <laughs> so basically, Curran doesn't want to believe that uh, this creature is still out there killing because he thinks that they already took care of it. And Kate's just like, no, we didn't. And when she goes home, there is a, a fresh head on a pike in her yard. And uh, they know it's fresh. They're shape changers. They can smell that it's fresh. But because Crest wasn't the bad guy, he decides that she's a glory hound. So basically, he doesn't want to believe her, even though there was a, a corpse left on her lawn. And that's why he's mad. That's why they all are mad at her. It's so stupid. Men are stupid. Like, Gordon Andrews is the one who uh, writes for the men, and that just tells me that all men are stupid. Let's introduce the dog. They know her. Welcome to the end of the vlog. You're supposed to turn. Yeah. Welcome to the end of the vlog. You're supposed to say hello to the camera. <laughs> so, what'd you read this week? I read a lot of stuff this week, unfortunately. It's all behind me, what I've read this week. <laughs> Some of it was good. Most of it was um, mediocre. I, I went through the last, the second half of the New 52 don't, Batman. Don't you dare. What's she doing? She's licking my blanket. You psychopath. <laughs> and I, I read Down Comes the Night, which I didn't really talk about because I don't have anything to say. I don't have anything to say about it. It was a waste of a premise. <laughs> it was a waste of my time. I don't recommend it. No matter what you hear about it, I knew you'd show up, Satan. <laughs> uh, let's display this one because it's pretty. Okay. I read... What did I read? I read um, The Romantic Agenda, which I enjoyed. I gave four stars. And then I also read Twice Tempted. Which I have mixed feelings about, as I have with all those books. And then I started... What did I leave off on? I start... Oh, no, no, I finished Magic Bites. I don't know if I ever said what I ultimately thought of it, which is that it needed a better editor. You know, a lot of friggin' books do. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what I should say for my wrap-up. It's so hard trying to figure out what to say for comic books. But for... I'll just... For recommendations on what I've, I've read this week, I'll say I don't recommend Buffy. I do recommend the Haunted Mansion comic book. I don't recommend Batman Arkham City by Paul Dini. I read Batman The Adventure Continues Season 2, which I loved. I read Umbrella Academy Volume 1 and 2, which was fine. I read all the New 52 Batmans, which were the, the second half was pretty weak. And it ended pretty weak because it ends on something called epilogue which is just like extra stories which i don't think was a good idea and then i read some simpsons comics which were also meh the one uh the one good thing i think i could say uh harrow county has uh, a sequel series that i started and it's pretty good harrow county by uh colin bunn it's this little town in like the 1940s with creepy magic and it's great and then everything else was just fine. Gotham by Gaslight, fine. Year One, Ross Al Ghul, fine. Catwoman, Win in Rome, hated it. Batman, Haunted Night, fine. Joker Loves Harley, cute. Batman Who Laughs, <laughs> pretty good. Superman Red Sun, boring. And that's it, other than the Jair Wards, which I can't talk yeah. about, and Bridget Too Much, I can't talk about. Yeah, all right. We hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you did, do all the fancy stuff down below. Your dog wants. I know, she's so desperate for attention. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye.